Yo, what is up, everybody? Jumping here, and I am back with my Resident Evil Remake HD series. Alrighty, we need to go ahead and continue with our investigation. Now, there's a room that we have to go in around this area. We have yet to go in there, and if I remember, something special will happen once we go in there. And it's actually really important that you do this quickly, because basically, if you mess this up, you will lose out on a chance to get a really awesome weapon so yeah you want to do this now if i remember right when it comes to this weapon once again jill gets a major advantage because she gets the weapon way earlier than chris i'm telling you guys playing as chris is such a fucking bitch man richard what happened you're wounded <sighs> this whole place is a killing zone. Uh, there are monsters. Uh, uh, what did this to you? A big snake. And it had to be poisonous. Poisonous? Richard, hold on. Bring me serum. I saw some, but didn't bring any. I'll go and get it, okay? You're gonna make it. Thanks. Oh no, poor Richard. That was some great voice acting by Richard. Yeah. Anyway, so we need to save this guy. And if you save him, you can get a unique shotgun. Now, it's really easy to save him. All we have to do is go to the other, like, storage room. So we just need to make our way over there. I believe it's really simple to get back over there. All we gotta do is come over here, and then we go through this door. And... I think there's a door that will lead back to that area, so we're gonna go grab the serum, save Richard, and then we'll investigate that room. But it's important that we actually investigate that room because there's an item- OH GOD FUCKING DICK! I did not see you! Okay. He should die maybe? He's dead? He's dead. I'm gonna burn his ass. Normally I would say this guy here if you can't avoid his ass because honestly like I hate to waste my ammo or time killing him, but he kind of deserved to die because he grabbed me. But, now we can actually take the time to move this statue. There's a blue, like, crystal gem thing. And later, if we go back down to that room down there, we can grab the item. And we can use it at that tiger statue? And I think it will get us some shotgun shells, maybe? Which is actually not bad. And I can totally use them, I believe. I only have two bullets in my shotgun. Now, this shotgun that I have, the very, uh, the starting shotgun, as Jill, I would recommend to use all six bullets to never waste your shotgun shells reloading it, unless you absolutely have to. Oh, wrong room, wrong room. Anyway, yeah, don't waste your ammo reloading it, because pretty soon here, we should be able to get that other shotgun, the unique one, and it's much better. So... Just blow through the ammo in that shotgun, try to use it to blow off the legs or the heads of zombies so that they don't come back as re-deads or crimson heads, I found that out, I was looking through the trophies and I seen that it said something about defeat a crimson head and I remember that is the actual name of the re-deads. I like my name better because that was a name I came up for when I was a kid and I would talk to people like my sister. You know what's really interesting? I don't think I talked about this, but when I first played this game, my sister was really into it, um, just like I was. She didn't play it, because she never really played games all that much. She used to like to play Super Nintendo and stuff, like uh, when we were really, really young. But, you know, as we got older, she never played games anymore. But when I had this game, she was really interested in it because she liked the puzzles. She really thought the story was good. She thought the graphics were amazing because, honestly, the graphics for this game when this came out was, like, incredible. It really was, at least to me, because at that time, I only owned the GameCube. Then eventually, I bought the Xbox, and I never was into the whole Sony thing. I was pretty much a ginormous uh, Nintendo fanboy when I was a kid. Had the Super Nintendo, had the Nintendo 64. I didn't like the PlayStation because it was like, you know, the competition. I was the fanboy. And, you know, this is something that you guys really shouldn't do. I'm just going to give some tips out for anyone who's kind of younger. You know, the thing is, is that I think that the reason why a lot of people are really, really like, um, you know, fanboys. And they 
are just so loyal to a product is more or less the fact that they might not be able to afford the other product. Like, if you own a PS4, you might not be able to afford to buy an Xbox One, or vice versa. So a lot of times, when you're younger and you're immature, if you can't have it, you, you want to hate it. Because you, you're telling yourself, oh yeah, it sucks, you know, I don't need it because it sucks. But if you had a choice, if I was to say, you know, hey, I'll buy it for you right now, you know, no strings attached, most people would probably say, oh, okay, sure, you know, just because there are always games on every console and on PC too that you might want to play, okay? Here, Richard, I'm going to give you a shot. Hang in there. Jill, here's my radio. Take it. I'm... <sighs> Does it ever not hurt? <laughs> okay, good. So, he should survive. I'm okay. The others... Tell me what happened, bro! I mean, you're the only member of Bravo team that I've ran into so far, so you could at least tell me, like, what has happened to everyone. I wanna know! Anyway, back to my story. I was kind of got, I got distracted with the whole fanboy crap. Did I blow his head off? Oh, fuck. I thought it did. We need to run. Uh, run, run, run. Uh, fall down, bitch. Uh, move. He dead? He's dead. Um, I hate to burn his ass, but we are going to burn him real quick. Because we do have to come back in this room later, and he's going to get up, and he might kill us, or attack us. But we don't want that. Anyway, yeah, but I do believe that a lot of fanboys generally are people that are kind of immature, you know, or they just can't afford both of the consoles, so they'll become very loyal to one just because of that. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. But anyway, but when I was a kid, I believe we can like this, if I remember. When I was a kid, like, my sister was really into this game, and she always watched me play it. Shotgun shells, yeah, 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 finally. And, uh, yeah, we always had a really good time, you know. We always had a really good time, like, playing this game. I actually remember when we first, uh, started playing it. Oh, God, we gotta run. Now, this guy we can kill with our handgun and not worry about it. We don't have to in here again. But I remember, like, one time, uh, we got stuck on one of the puzzles. Oh, just, oh, look, he's stuck. We got, like, totally stuck on one of the puzzles, and we didn't know what to do. And I remember, like, we ended up, like, just saying, all right, well, let's, um go to bed and everything and then like as we're sitting there we were like uh, talking a little bit about like the game before we went to sleep and i believe like either i or my sister kind of thought about well maybe we have to do this and then we ended up actually staying up like the whole night because we we're like i think you're right and we went and tried it and it worked and we ended up staying up like the whole night like just playing the game i mean it was just it was a great time like when i was a kid me and my sister we always got along really well and people always wondered like what was that about? Like, why? It, it, we never were, like, my mother never taught us to, like, share, like, toys and stuff. But we were always cool like that. We never had a problem, like, you know. We never got into arguments or fights over toys or anything like that. We always shared. And, um, you know, I remember when I was a kid, I read, like, um, the first three Harry Potter books. And at this time, she didn't read any of them. Okay, I'm trying to remember where we need to go. I think we need to use this thing now. If you remember, there's a room with a piano, so I need to make my way back down that to that room. Anyway, though, um, what was I talking about? It was, huh? It's about my sister. Oh, it's about Harry Potter. Yeah. So, anyway, you know, when I was a kid, I read like the first Harry Potter books, but then I got out of it. Honestly, by the time those movies came out, I, I just into it so I didn't read like you know any of the other books well my sister got into it later so when she first started reading it I knew a lot about you know Harry Potter and I talked to her and then when she started reading the books that I never read I would actually just go into her room and I would talk to her for hours about Harry Potter although I really wasn't interested in oh god oh god that's not good that is definitely a red re dead you could see the red Oh, fuck, dude. Oh, fuck! 
This isn't good. I hope he's dead. Fuck off. I wish I could blow his head off, dude. I don't know if they're dead or not, dude. Oh, you're not dead! Ugh, fuck you. Run! Run, girl, run! I don't want to use my last shotgun shell on him. Ugh, fuck you! Get off me! And he has, like, one arm! I can't get distance! I can't... I'm in caution, dude. We're gonna have to shotgun his ass. Get the fuck out of here. Bitch. <sighs> Holy shit, dude. I almost fucking died. Anyway, yeah, I would actually talk to her about Harry Potter for, like, hours and hours. Because I understand what it's like to be a nerd. And my sister's a huge nerd like me. You know, really into Star Wars, all that kind of shit. And I, I get it. And I know one thing. When you are really into something, you want to really have, like, a nerdgasm at times. You know, like, she would read something in the book that was, like, crazy. And at this time, I didn't read the other books, so I didn't really even know. And I kind of really didn't care. But I would sit there, I would listen, and talk about it. Because I knew, you know, she wanted to get that out, so. Like I said, as kids, we really got along, and people always found that to be so interesting. Yeah, buddy. Play that Beethoven. Now, I know that this might be getting old at this point, but once again... This is a part that Jill has a huge advantage over Chris. I mean, it's crazy, man. I have said this like a billion times, but if I remember right, when you come here as Chris, he doesn't know how to play the piano. He's like too much of an idiot to play the piano. I should have actually went through that diary, my bad. That's a really good diary, by the way. All right, we need to grab this item. Ah, oh, fuck, that's right, okay. Basically, we have to go get another item real quick. Okay, so we have to reuse this, and then we'll go get the other item and come back. Anyway, as Chris, you know, what happens is you come in here, and once you have, like, the music and everything, you can try to play the piano. He doesn't know how to play the piano, so he can't do it. And, um, then we're... Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but a person will come in, and she can play the piano for him. But she doesn't, like, remember exactly how to play. So, wait, where's the zombie? <gasps> Dude, the zombie's gone. That's weird. Okay. Maybe I blew his head off and I didn't realize it. Anyway, she doesn't actually remember how to play, so then you have to leave and then come back a little bit later and she'll, like, you know, remember how to play and everything. And then, there you go. But like I said, it's just, it's crazy, man. It's crazy that um, it, it works that way. You know what I mean? Ridiculous. Anyway, let's go. We have to make our way back now. And we can use this fake item to replace the real item. So basically, the moral of the story is that Chris has a ridiculous amount of disadvantage. It's unbelievable. And I hate to keep talking about it and bringing it up, but I do kind of want to point out the little differences in the story. Alright, so let's use this one, and th the thing should open back up. And now we can use the golden one where we got the fake one, and that should allow us to solve a little puzzle. Alright, so let's go ahead and leave. I have to get some healing items. I have to find an item box soon. I don't want to take any more damage. But those re-deads, man, they are freaking deadly. Now, the zombie I killed, huh. In a way, I kind of want to do something. But the zombie that I killed, I believe he shouldn't be there when I go back in the room. It might be risky because I'm weak. But, um, yeah, I might actually have to try that because I kind of want to go get those shotgun shells or whatever it is by using this blue gem down in this room. You know, one of the things about, like, the original Resident Evil games is I really love the, you know, the puzzles and thinking about what to do in what order. You know what I'm saying? And you can really figure things out. Okay, now this is uh, to do with the puzzle. So it's a picture of two knights striking each other. The short sword has been thrust into the breast of one knight while the long sword has pierced the head of the other. So that is our clue, and what we can do is we can use the clock now. If you notice, there's a helmet and a breastplate. 
So that's what, that's our puzzle. And we need to make it so that the, the long sword, meaning like, the, it's confusing. All right, here, let, let me show you, watch. If you select sl uh, small, it moves that, and you're like, really? Really, the you know the the large one, the the long one is the small one, but I guess it makes sense for clocks. You know, because you know I've, the thing is, is that you have your hour hand and you have your minute hand, so I guess that's what it means. It should have said instead of small and large, it would be better if it would have said minute and hour. That would have been better. But all we have to do is just move the large one twice, and then we're done basically. So it's a really easy puzzle once you look at the picture. Um, there we go. Now we just gotta, like, uh, say no. And, yeah. Fucking awesome. So what is this gonna do? Oh! Okay. It reveals a switch, maybe? What is this? Oh shit, no, it's a, it's a key. Is this the helmet key? No, it's a shield key. Shield key? I don't remember that. Huh. Wow, yeah, where does that go? Okay, I'll have to think about that for a second. Hopefully I can figure that out. I don't want to get stuck. And that's the one thing I'm really afraid of, is getting to a part that I totally don't remember, and then getting absolutely stuck for a long, long time. Because if that happens, oh man, that's gonna... You know, it just, it does happen with these games, though. You get to a, a part that you just don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're like, what the fuck am I doing, you know? You know what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna use this as a shortcut. Alright, so it looks like we're pretty safe right here. There's a zombie over there, though. Oh, shit, there might be re-deads in this room. I know, I don't think I killed any zombies. But anyway, we can go ahead and use this gem right here. And I believe this should get us an item. Come on. What is it? Shotgun shell, nice. Okay, this is good because I really haven't found shotgun shells up to this point. Now we have twelve bullets, and that is awesome. And I believe you can get another gem, and if you use it, you can get back magnum ammo. They have this same thing in um, Code Veronica, which I actually recently did replay. I downloaded. They had a huge sale on the Xbox 360 for Resident Evil games a while ago. I end up downloading a shit ton of their game. Oh my god. We're gonna have to do that guy. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to run past him. Died, but... Oh, he fell down. I'm not even gonna bother finishing him off. Ah, oh, it takes so many bullets to knock him down. I don't even know if he died. Anyway. But, um, yeah, they had a huge sale on Resident Evil games, and I ended up downloading Resident Evil 4. And I barely played it, which was a shame. But I'm just, I'm really not into the third person uh, Resident Evil games. Alright, good. We can refill our um, kerosene. Anyway, I'm not really into those anymore. I love Resident Evil 4 as a game. It's a great game. I would give that game at least a 9.5 out of 10, if not 10. Like, that was such an amazing game. But I just couldn't get back into it, you know? It's too action driven, you know? It's too. It's too much about the action. It's not scary. It's not it's not creepy. I like the creepy action. But I also downloaded Code Veronica. Okay, the HD one. And I played that like crazy, man. I was having so much fun with that. Okay, I guess we should take our shotgun with us. Um I need to heal myself, so let's see. What do we have here? I think I'm just gonna use one of my herbs. I think what is this? Just two herbs? Oh, that worked. Alright, so we have this helmet key. I have to figure out where that goes. I don't think I'm going to need my kerosene for a while, so we're going to put that away just to free up some space. And I have the grenade launcher. I should actually use the grenade launcher. I'm going to put my ammo away too. Eventually here, I might actually get to a point where I won't need my handgun anymore. I just take the grenade launcher and the shotgun and just use the grenade launcher for special occasions. Okay, now where the fuck is the grenade launcher? Wait, what the hell? Where is it? I did pick that up, didn't I? You know what? I never got the grenade launcher. Okay, well that's something we need to go do then. I think I should probably take... No, I don't need to take the grenade launcher. 
Alright, well yeah. You can get a grenade launcher as Jill, and it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. But, once again, oh god, how many times in this episode do I have to say this? But, uh, once again, Chris has a huge disadvantage compared to Jill. What will happen is that uh, you cannot get the grenade launcher as Chris. Don't know why, it's just stupid. Now maybe, maybe you can get the grenade launcher. I might be tripping on that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I kind of think that Chris doesn't get the grenade launcher. It's fucking ridiculous, dude. But yeah, I guess I totally forgot to go get this, but what we have to do is we have to go in this one room. I think I remember what I did. I unlocked the door and then I kept going. But I could have, you know, I really should have got this. Like, this was a big mistake for me not to come and get this. Alright, so, basically we need to come out here and there is some ammo right here for us. Awesome, handgun ammo. And I believe there's herbs in this area too that we can grab. We're gonna grab those. Alright, is that an herb? No, it's a dagger? What? That's an herb. What? That's not an herb? Are you serious? Oh my god, you gotta be shitting me. Wow. Okay, so this is one of the Dead Stars members. And here's the grenade launcher. Now, we can use this against like the first boss. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's what we need to do. Yeah, that is exactly what we need to do. We need to use the shield key for that. Now we need to be quick about this because this guy's gonna come after us. He only wakes up if you come back here and you grab the herbs. So, uh, grab these. Um, basically, if um, if you want them, but it's risky. <laughs> but you can juke his ass like that and just run for it. Now, in a way, I kind of remember if you have no weapon equipped, you run faster. But I'm not 100% on that. So, I don't know. I actually, um, before I started this episode, I switched the controls back to the tank controls just to uh, see if I could control it better that way. And holy shit. Shit, that was that was awful guys it was so freaking bad trying to use the tank controls so highly would not recommend going back if you can just play with these controls you'll eventually kind of get used to it and it's so much better the problem that I have with the controls is that the camera angles just troll me at times where you have to press the button the right way and if you don't press the button the right way you're gonna have a lot of issues. Alright, so let's pick this up and we'll go ahead and combine that real quick. And I'm gonna equip the grenade launcher now. And if we have to, we can load the shotgun. But I believe this is where the helmet key goes. Not the helmet key, the shield key. Because the I think this only opens one door. And I think it's this one. Because this is our first boss. Or is it our first boss? Yeah, I guess this is technically our first boss. Alright, so let's do this. Some bitch. Alright, so I believe there's shotgun shells in this room. Oh yeah, okay, awesome. That's what's up. Let's go, let's go. Oh no! Uh oh. Time. All right, so Richard's gonna help us. This does not happen, is Chris? Uh, <laughs> oh god. Anyway, yeah. So we're going to. This is the secret. Oh god, I got hit. I'm poisoned. Not. Oh, that's really not good. Oh, that's really not good. Ugh. He's dead. Thanks. Oh no! Richard! <laughs> that scream. <laughs> okay, so he's still alive. 
Oh god, fuck, dude, fuck. Oh god! See, the thing is, you want to get behind him like this. And... Oh, I'm out of ammo. Dude, okay. I think I'm gonna use that now. Fuck. Out of ammo. Can I grab his shotgun now? Oh, you can't. Okay, so get this, because I don't want to load. I do not want to reload my other shotgun. Oh, I'm gonna get hit, though, probably. Dude, I don't even think I have. Ow, you son of a bitch. I don't think I have any blue earth. Okay. Well, that's the end of the fight. So now he should run away. Where are you going, bitch? Where are you going? Huh? Oh, shit. Don't waste ammo. I mean, he's running away. You can't kill him. Alright, so let's come over here now. And we can get one of these creepy, spooky masks. Now, is that the last one? I think it was. I'm not too sure. We'll have to check the item box. Okay, so. Hmm. Trying to think. Blue herbs. Do I have any blue herbs? I don't. I don't think I do. Oh shit. Oh, am I poisoned? I need serum. I don't remember this. Oh, okay, so we just have to go. Alright, yeah, sure. We'll just go get some serum. I don't really remember that. Um, it's probably because I, if I, you know, I don't really. Oh, son of a bitch! What are you doing here, asshole? Fuck you! We're gonna juke his ass. I don't remember ever really getting poisoned in that fight that often. I know I have probably been before, but the secret to not get hit, which I unfortunately fucked up with, is you want to like just be behind the snake, and then he really doesn't hit too much. Gotta watch our health because we're poisoned. That's one of the things I always hated about the classic Resident Evil games, is that in almost all of them you can get poisoned, and it's it's the worst. Now, all these games, they have, like, special rewards that you can um, beat them. So, basically, once you get to NG+, you can unlock a whole bunch of the awesome rewards. Well, some of the games have, like, really easy rewards. Other ones have really hard ones. I remember Code Veronica was always a fucking bitch and I actually did this when I replayed it because as a kid I never did it I got close to doing it but I never did it as a kid but it's hilarious the story that goes with that is actually hilarious but what I did was I beat the game without saving it once and never using a um, first aid spray and I believe you have to beat it under three hours like that's all the rules and if you do that you can get the rocket launcher but that's the only way to do it. It's a real fucking pain in the ass because you can't save it and you have to play totally through it, obviously, to save it. You can't use any first aid sprays, so if you are in an emergency situation where you need to use something like that, you can't do it. And you have to be in a certain time frame, which that game is actually like pretty fucking epic. Alright, we're gonna put away our grenade launcher as well. Alright, give me the serum. Give me the shit, please. Thank you very much. I hope to use it. And we're good. Alright guys, well I'm gonna end this episode here, but um... Yeah, I actually want to finish the story real quick, what I was talking about. But this is what happened to me, and this is why I never did that challenge as a kid. Where I, I've i done every challenge for all the Resident Evil games. For the remake, for Resident Evil 2, for Nemesis, and now for Code Veronica. But I couldn't, I didn't do it when I was young, where I did all the other ones when I was young. What happened to me was that, if you remember the GameCube, they had the WaveBird, which was like the first really good wireless controller. Like, there was other wireless controllers before that, but they were all like third-party, shitty fucking controllers. But the WaveBird was like the first one that was super good, it was made by Nintendo, and I love that shit. But, what I always would do to save the battery, I would turn off the controller, because there was like a little switch there, you could turn it off at the bottom. To save battery life during the cutscene. Well, I got to the very end of the game, right? I was probably like 20 to 30 minutes away from beating the game. And unfortunately, I was watching the cutscene. There was like a really cool cutscene with Wesker. And he's fighting like some monster. And basically, I turned the controller off. And then when it based, uh, what happened was when it came back, you have like seconds to run away otherwise the monster will grab you and instantly kill you okay and what happened was 
had the controller off, and I'm trying to run away. I'm like, I can't run! What the fuck? I can't run! And then I realize the controller's off, and I'm like, <gasps> and I turn it back on, and the bitch grabs me, burns me alive, and I was like, fuck this shit, dude. Fuck that. Rage so hard. I don't even think I ever played Code Veronica ever again after that, until when I played it recently on the Xbox. Anyway, I really do hope you have enjoyed this. If you have, will you please like the video for me? Be sure to subscribe, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.